Vaccine, check. Passport, check. Anyone to serve you at your destination? Uh, we'll get back to you. Hi there, I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English lesson number 374. JR is the producer. He uploaded the transcript, how to video, and the rest of today's lesson to plainenglish.com slash 374. Coming up today, the global hospitality market is suffering from a shortage of workers. Across the world, hotels, restaurants, bars, and tourist attractions are scrambling to fill vacancies as demand recovers from the pandemic induced recession. How would you like a thousand dollars to work on the Great Barrier Reef? The English expression we'll review today is have a hard time. It's not a difficult expression, but it's good to review. We also have a quote of the week. So let's get going. A bed and breakfast on the Jersey Shore, a traditional pub in England, and a tour boat in Australia. They're very different businesses, thousands of miles away from each other, but they all have one thing in common. They're having a hard time finding workers. As economies in the developed world restart after over a year of hibernation, businesses are waking up to an unexpected nightmare, a lack of trained workers to meet surging demand. Consumers, flush with cash they saved during the pandemic, are ready to travel again and enjoy restriction-free life of dining out, tourism, and shopping. But businesses that serve these consumers say they can't find enough workers. In the U.S., there are 8 million job openings, the highest ever. In Australia, job vacancies are running 40% higher than they were pre-pandemic. 80% of Britain's restaurants had vacancies for both front-of-the-house and back-of-the-house positions. The shortage has several causes. Many people who work in the hospitality industry are transient, they move where the jobs are to serve tourists. But with the tourism industry shut for so long, many of those workers left town and haven't come back. City centers are high-cost locations that heave with tourists and office workers. During the lockdowns, they were ghost towns. Workers at big hotels, restaurants, convention centers, and tourist attractions simply went home or transitioned to other industries like delivery or logistics. Each place faces its own challenges. Over the last 30 years, Europe's economy has slowly integrated so that people could easily move across borders to fill demand in the world's second largest economic bloc. But the lockdowns shut national borders, making it harder for companies to fill jobs with workers from outside their home country. Brexit hit the UK 
at a bad time. Many of the hospitality workers there had come from Europe. They left during the lockdown and may never come back. Australia was spared the worst of the pandemic, but the Australian economy relies on temporary workers in its agriculture and hospitality industries. This source of labor dried up, and the country is cautious about letting foreigners in again. And in America, the government was unusually generous with stimulus and unemployment benefits for most of the pandemic. That saved many families from financial distress, but it's giving workers extra negotiating leverage as the economy opens up. America's unemployment rate at 5.8% is the lowest since the pandemic began, but it's still high when you consider the record number of unfilled jobs. Both businesses and governments are doing their best to entice people off the couch and into paid work, even if that work is different than what they had done before the pandemic. The American state of Arizona is paying non-working citizens a bonus of $2,000 if they move into full-time work. Sunny Queensland, Australia, is desperate for people to fill its jobs in the tourism industry. The state government announced a program called Work in Paradise. The program offers over $1,000 in cash, discounts on housing, and a travel voucher for anyone willing to move to the state to fill vacancies in the hospitality sector. The state premier, Anastasia Palaschuk, said there are jobs available as chefs, waiters, bartenders, tour guides, and deckhands on the boats that take tourists around the Great Barrier Reef. Another tactic is to relax rules and regulations. Britain is famous for serving up draft beer at its pubs. But with few applicants, pubs are scrapping qualification requirements. Australia caps the number of hours international students can devote to paid work. That cap, however, has been lifted for anyone working in tourism and hospitality jobs. But many companies know there's one big thing that would entice workers. More money. McDonald's, Walmart, Chipotle, Bank of America, and Under Armour are among the companies that announced raises for employees. One McDonald's restaurant in Florida was offering people $50 just to show up to an interview. The biggest examples are in tourism, but other industries are affected too. Specialized manufacturing, mining, construction, agriculture, child care, all these industries are having trouble filling jobs. I hope this is temporary. I hope prices adjust and wages go up and these jobs get filled, because an unfilled job can have hidden consequences. If a parent 
can't find childcare, that parent is going to be limited in what he, but probably she, can do in her own career. If a builder can't find people to build new homes, then housing prices will continue to go higher for everyone. And if there aren't enough people to harvest the vegetables or work in the slaughterhouses, then food prices can go up for everyone. I do suspect that this is somewhat temporary. COVID scrambled everyone. And suddenly, downtowns that were full of jobs became empty. The people working there left. No reason to pay high rent to live in a place with no jobs. And I still think people aren't sure how many of those downtown jobs are coming back. And once people have some confidence of where jobs will be for the long run, they'll be able and willing to move to those places. But if you're a bartender or waiter or front desk employee at a hotel, you have a lot of negotiating power right now. Today's expression is to have a hard time. This isn't a hard one to learn, but it's really important for you to know. When you have difficulty with something, when you're trying to do something, but you just can't seem to do it, you say you're having a hard time. We usually say having a hard time plus an ing verb, and that, in fact, is how you heard it earlier today. I said that businesses in the hospitality industry are having a hard time filling jobs. They are having a hard time filling jobs. They're trying and some are succeeding, but in general, companies in the hospitality industry are short-handed. They can't seem to find enough workers, or if they find workers, they suffer from a lot of turnover. Having a hard time doesn't necessarily mean something is impossible It just means it's a difficult problem to solve and you're having trouble. Obviously, some businesses have all the employees they need, and some businesses may be having a hard time filling positions, but they do manage to do it for a while. When you hear having a hard time, think, having trouble, or having difficulty. I'm having a hard time getting the printer to work. One of the worst parts about office life is figuring out the printers and fixing paper jams. I'm having a hard time getting the printer to work. Do you know how this thing works? Well, I took one of the worst parts about office life and I imported it into my own home office. I bought a small printer and scanner that I thought, I thought, would be simple. And it did work for a while, but now I'm having a hard time getting it to work from some devices. I'm having a hard time figuring this out. Can you help me? You might say this at work, in school, or at home. If you're trying to solve a problem, but you can't seem to resolve it, you can ask someone for help 
by saying, I'm having a hard time figuring this out. Some more examples. I'm having a hard time logging in. I'm having a hard time finding trustworthy information. The soccer team is having a hard time scoring goals. I'm having a hard time dealing with stress. Another way to use this expression is to say having a hard time with plus a noun, sometimes usually a person. I'm having a hard time with my youngest son these days. That means your youngest son is giving you trouble, maybe misbehaving in school or not helping with household chores. I'm having a hard time with my boss. Or you might say, I'm having a hard time with this new job. Your elderly parents or grandparents might be having a hard time with their new phones. If you own an old house, you might have a hard time with mice or other little critters that find their way into the walls. When I was growing up, we had a hard time with skunks. Not during my entire childhood, thank God, but for a season, we were having a hard time with skunks. They would get into the trash and obviously stink up the yard. Our dog got sprayed by a skunk and had to stay in the garage for a few days. She had a hard time sleeping outside, I'll tell you that. Today's quote of the week is one I'm trying to keep in mind myself. I sometimes have a hard time relaxing because I just have too much flowing through my head. But I found this quote and I'm trying to keep it in mind. It's from the author Anne Lamott. She says, Almost anything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. A couple of days ago, I was just overwhelmed with so much to do, and I felt I could never take a break. I couldn't even imagine when the work would go away, but I followed that advice and unplugged for a few minutes and got to work on the to-do list one thing after another. I've still got a lot going on, but unplugging for a few minutes definitely helps. Almost anything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you, says the author Anne Lamont. And that's all for another Plain English. I want to acknowledge, as I so often do, that everyone's experience with the vaccine and the economy is so different. Here in the U.S. and in other parts of the world, demand is surging back and we have tons of jobs open. But I know in many, many other places including where we have a lot of listeners, the vaccine is slow to roll out and there are not enough jobs. And India is just coming off a brutal wave of COVID. So this is obviously not everyone's experience, but hang in there and I'm crossing my fingers that you can all get your vaccines and get back to normal as quickly as possible. Coming up, On Thursday, scams on dating apps surged during the COVID lockdowns, and you will not believe what scammers are doing now. I 
was shocked. I'll give you a hint. It could land the victim, the victim of the scam, in jail. That's coming up on Thursday. See you then.